the concert hall at home, reality or fiction? Welcome back to the HB channel. How often have you been promised a concert hall at home? And did you ever had the identical physical experience you get at a live event? I didn't. Don't be mistaken, I enjoy music at home every day. My day starts with watching the news, eating Greek yogurt and muesli and drinking an espresso, directly followed by half an hour of music for my big set in the living room. This is my daily routine for years now and recently I have read that listening to music activates a meditation-like state of the brain. So I do enjoy music at home, but it differs from going to a live event. Concert halls are much bigger than living rooms and that prevents the physical event of an orchestra in a concert hall to take place in a living room. You couldn't house an orchestra in a living room and if that would have been solved, you would be too close to have the instruments integrate into one orchestra and it would be far too loud too. The concert hall forms an integral part of the orchestra and different reverb times are chosen for different kinds of music. Reverberation is measured using an explosive sound like the sound of a blank gun. The gun is fired while the loudness is recorded in a graph. The reverb time is the time it takes for the sound pressure level to lower 60 dB. Acousticians use the term RT60 from reverberation time 60 dB. A large church can have a reverb time of over well over 10 seconds. A concert hall will have a reverb time of 2 to 2.5 seconds. An opera house would like to have a shorter reverb time for better intelligibility, say 1.2 to 1.4 seconds, while pump venues want to stay well below 1 second. The longer the reverb, the fuller the sound, but the lower the articulation. So even a concert hall isn't ideal for every music genre. Then how can we expect to have the concert hall at home? where the reverb time is only a few tenths of a second. This is where the film industry comes to aid. The first movies were nothing more than registrations of a stage plays without a sound. Text cards were used for dialogue. Even the introduction of talkies, movies with sound, didn't fascinate a large audience enough. Then filmmakers started taking the camera on location, learned how to cut scenes together and started to use the medium differently to tell the story. Milestone here was Hitchcock's scene in Psycho. You can watch this scene by clicking here. A woman gets murdered by a knife but the actual murder isn't shown but left to the imagination of the viewer. Directors found out that there is no need to film a scene of getting into the car. Just cutting from outside the car to inside the car does the job. Our brain fills in the details. Going one step beyond is what Hitchcock did, deliberately not showing the knife entering the flesh. He left it to the viewer to make up that part to its own taste. Nowadays movies are nowhere near linear registrations of an event but a way to tell a story using essential visual elements. Sound plays a big role in this too. When the threat of Jaws attacking again gets bigger, the famous Jaws music pattern is, play, is faded in. Even without the visual clue, the viewer knows a new shark attack is due. Or take the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, where troops storm Omaha Beach from their landing crafts. The scene has no sound at all while it should have been a mayhem of sounds. Add matching sounds or music to it and the effect is for a large part gone. What's the relevance for music production you'll ask? To answer that we have to split up the answer into acoustical concerts like classical music and electronically amplified or enhanced music. Let's start with acoustic concerts. 
Recording engineers have been offering us the impression of acoustic concerts for years, sometimes without even realizing it. Sound engineers choose to play microphones in given positions so they give us a good impression of what happened acoustically during the concert. Anyway, that is or at least should be the intention of the audio engineer. He must also compensate for the lack of visual clues. Where the concert goer sees the first violin play his solo and therefore can focus on it, the solo must be brought to the attention of the music lover at home by accentuating it in the soundscape. Therefore a good classical recording engineer must be able to read scores and have a decent level of music education. Have several sound engineers record the same concert with their own microphone placement and their own mix and you get several different impressions of that concert. This might seem wrong at first, but remember that there is no right way. You can't reproduce the physical event in your living room as stated before. Those recordings that best tell you the story of what happened during the concert becomes the most popular. It is the combination of a good orchestra, a good performance, a good hall and a good sound engineer that makes a good recording. It's the way sound engineers make that report that makes labels popular. Philip Classics, nowadays Polyhemnia and Pentatone, and Decca, Deutsche Grammophon, Harmonia Mundi, all popular classical labels and all with their own way of reporting and thus their own sound. At the other end of the scale you find musicians that produce music in the studio using everything and anything that makes sound as long as it fits artistically. Here it's not a live concert that is to be reproduced at home but a newly created soundscape that is designed for the home and the car or on the radio. Here it's the live concert that needs to reproduce the recording to a certain extent. If you would compare classical music to the work of Baroque painters, then perhaps modern studio recordings should be compared to Impressionism or Surrealism. Ever since albums like Sgt. Pepper by the Beatles and Uma Guma by Pink Floyd, pieces of real world sounds are formed into music. In fact, they were preceded by musique concrète movement that did about the same and started just before the First World War when the recording process was not ready for it. But let's not digress. If there apparently is no truth, if it's all subjective, then why bother buying a refined stereo set? Why spend a lot of money on equipment that is developed to precisely reproduce what was created during recording? To answer that, I'll go back to the movie world. Have you seen The Matrix, where every shot is far too blue? It's how the director wanted to express the cold, dark environment the movie portrayed. What if the projector in the theater was set towards a lower color temp temperature, reproducing a warmer talent? That would ruin the intent of the director. What if the warmer color shots of Lord of the Rings were made more bluish? then the contrast between the Shire and Mount Doom would have gone lost. No, the decision made in the studio should be frozen in, transported and reproduced with as little loss as possible. How about the equipment used in the studios to judge the recordings on? Audio researcher Floyd Tool researched the accuracy of the monitoring in studios to discover that they largely vary but there is a kind of average that middles out in between the extremes. It is my personal experience that when a set is composed of properly balanced components, it will play almost all music in a musical way. Yes, some recordings might sound bass heavy, some sound somewhat dull and some might sound aggressive, but about 90% of my music library of 8000 plus albums sounds fairly good to extremely good. My reviews might help you to select proper sounding audio components that match the rest of your equipment. So subscribe to this channel, 
follow my Facebook page or my Twitter account if you want to keep posted. You'll find the information in the description below. There you also find links to the written version of this report. Questions can be posted below on my Facebook page or on the contact page on the hbproject.com. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you the next time or on the hbproject.com.